Hi guys, welcome to Iron Griffin Studio. Uh, I need some extra bits and pieces for the dungeon terrain that I'm building. Uh, I've got doors, I've got fireplace there, I've got all my dungeon tiles. I need something else, something to add a bit of height to the to the terrain and uh, you can maybe use it to, to block off walkways or um, provide cover for someone. So I have a good authority that a good thing to make is stone pillars. Now everyone apparently should have some of these. I think I want to make about six of them today. Um, I just I've, I found the best way to make them I think and I'm just going to copy off that method. This is not really my method. It's uh, you know a lot of people use it and yeah hopefully I'll, I'll maybe put a few interesting details in. I don't like leaving uh, terrain pieces without anything that's visually interesting about it. It's going to have some kind of uh, something on it that makes people go, oh, I like that. That's really cool. Like a really cool detail. I, I enjoy that, you know. And I always find that the really small, interesting details are the things that get talked about the most. Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to create some hopefully fairly interesting dungeon stone brick pillars. And they're going to be brick rather than a column. Yeah, going to be brick rather than a column. So let's see what we can do. Let's get to it. Okay, so what we're going to need is this stuff. This is XPS form. It's a uh, fairly standard kind of stuff that we get in the UK. Um, and this particular one is five millimeters thick and I've cut it into three quarter inch squares. And these are going to provide the each layer of, of brickwork, if you like. Uh, the, the main uh, centerpieces for uh, for these stone pillars. Um, however, to go on the top and the bottom of each pillar, you'll require another measurement, which will be a one inch uh, square. And these will kind of sit on the base and on the top of the stone bricks that are stacked between them. And they'll hopefully cap off the finished terrain piece. Now here I'm going to cut in a small groove using my X-Acto knife. It's about two thirds the way across. And I'm going to do this on each of the small square sections that I've cut out. And you will need a lot of these if you are going to do a lot of pillars. And then I'm going to bevel in these little grooves with my high-tech tool until I'm happy with that kind of texture and then if I just combine it with another one here you can see how these will fit together and you'll get a kind of brick texture very simple Okay, now each of those small squares, those uh, three quarter inch squares that you've made, is, you're going to need a lot of them, like I said, and they all need texturing, so I'm going to use the uh, the tumbling method. Basically, you just stick them all in a Tupperware tub or an old coffee tin or something that's relatively durable or just old that you don't need anymore. Put some rocks in there as well, I'm using a little bit of a garden slate, and then just tumble it around like this. I've muted this section obviously because it, this was horrible to listen to. And then just take everything out and what you'll find is that all of the pieces are kind of rounded a little bit and textured because the uh, the actual slate that was in that box has dented them and kind of added a little bit of uh, character to those pieces. So with all the smaller cross sections all nice and textured and rounded off, we can move on to texturing the bigger sections, the the, the top and the bottom of, of the uh, of the pillar. Now, for this, um, my camera work is slightly shoddy, but all I'm doing is I'm uh, taking a file and I'm just kind of beveling the edges a little bit just to make it look as though this stone is a little bit well worn. Uh, after all, it's probably been in a dungeon or a castle for god knows how many decades, so it's likely to look a little bit worse for wear.
Okay, so here we are with all of these uh, three quarter inch brick sections. And the idea is just to uh, alternate the orientation of these bricks to get a nice texture. Now at this point I'd contemplated using a cocktail stick or toothpick to keep them together and stop them from moving around, but I figured that would be very difficult to keep them central if I'm placing them all on a cocktail stick. So I thought I'll opt for hot glue. This actually turned out to be a much better idea. And even though you get annoying little wisps of glue, it's much easier to keep the each individual layer central to each other and uh, you, you get a better looking pillar in the end of it. All you've got to do is make sure that you keep those layers very flush with each other. All the edges need to be nice and flush. If they aren't, what you might end up with, with is a slightly uh, squiffy looking twisted uh, pillar by the end of it after all the layers have been added. So I'm doing a little bit of extra beveling there and then adding a bit more glue and adding the next layer. Just sit with it for two seconds while it dries, and while the glue cures, and uh, it shouldn't take too long. Hot glue tends to cure pretty quickly. And then a bit more glue, and a bit more brick layer. I'm, I'm resting it down on the, on the mat just to make sure that those edges are nice and flush with each other. So I know each piece is, is square. And there you have it. Looking pretty good. A little bit more. I think I did about nine layers of brick for each pillar. So it didn't take too long as you can see. Alright, so now that we've got the main body all assembled, it's just time to add the end caps. So, get it nice and central, nice and square. If it's not a right angle, it's a wrong angle. So make sure it's dead central. And then, add the top, or bottom, depending on which way up it is. I mean, half of these could be either way up. Okay, so I'm not going to show you how to undercoat something. Um, obviously it's foam so you can't really use uh, a spray can. Uh, what I would recommend is using my usual method which is just Mod Podge and black acrylic paint mixed together. Uh, I think a lot of people use this method for foam. It seems to be the, the safest and easiest and it seals the piece and it, and it provides a little bit of protection for it too. Uh, but now we're going to paint the bricks and uh, what you should do here is really just pick a brick and give it some kind of random stony colour. It doesn't have to be exactly right uh, as long as it's just a little bit of variation in the brickwork. It really will go a long way in the end uh, when it comes to uh, dry brushing and washing the piece. So there we have a bit of a patchwork hodgepodge of different bricks. Okay, well since that patchwork effect looks a bit dodgy at the moment, we're going to tone that down with a good heavy dry brush. Uh, I'm using a medium grey, but you just use whatever you've already used on all of your dungeon tiles. It should really be the same effect, just so that those parts all blend together quite nicely. So a good heavy dry brush all over the whole thing. Pick out all that surface detail that you've added and then move on to the next bit and then just, you know what, this is going to take ages so why don't I just, boom, done, look pretty good to me. Alright, let's get the wash on these pillars. So. Basically just the same washes you would always use. I'm using my uh, my own mix at the moment. This is a mostly black 
a little bit of brown wash and a little bit of water added. I think it's three parts black wash, two parts brown and one part water. And the idea is just to go over everything and get it all in there. This method looks a bit messy but um, it's a lot more calculated than you'd think. <laughs> Alright, so all of you eagle-eyed viewers, I'll just turn that around, will notice that I've added some chains. Uh, you can't go wrong with adding cool little texture details like this to, to Dungeon Terrain. Uh, chains are excellent for for this sort of thing, so I'm going to base coat them in Rhinox Hide. Uh, I find this to be pretty much the best base for all rusty metals. And then stage two of these chains was just to add a little bit of riser rust, uh, dry brushing it onto the to the chain as you normally would do to make it look rusty. Then I wanted to add a little bit of moss to these stone pillars. Now I'm using the fine turf uh, from Woodland Scenics there, and the idea is that you just mix this with a bit of PVA glue and get it into like a nice paste, sort of this sort of consistency, and then you just take a a little spreader, a little tool, or a spatula or something, or a coffee stirrer, and you just spread it onto the brickwork. Try and get it in between the, the bricks or maybe at the bottom, kind of like it's growing up the wall or growing down the wall from the top. I apologize for my camera skills at this point, so I'm going to cut to some final photographs. So as you can see I've added a, a little candle there in the, inside the alcove and as well as those chains also there's a torch on one of the pillars just hanging in a little sconce and then some skulls placed into the brickwork just to add a little bit more visual interest. All done. So. Um, I don't know what to say about this. Honestly, they were really quite easy to make. Quite therapeutic in a weird way to make them. Um, apparently they're super useful as well, so that's an added bonus. This is just a win-win. Uh, I enjoyed making the video and uh, I like all the interesting details I put on them. Um, things like the skulls and the candles and that. People are going to point them out more than the pillars, I know it. Uh, because, yeah, it's always the little details that, that get people's attention rather than the actual main bulk of the thing. But yeah, these are going to go straight in pretty much every game I play, apparently, so that should be good. Um, that's all for this video. I will see you all again next time. If you enjoyed this video, please like or subscribe or comment or whatever. And uh, it would be very much appreciative. Very much appreciated. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again next time. Till then, happy crafting.